Hey there. Thanks for checking in to Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology.com. I am Mr. Ulrich. In this video, we're going to be looking at experimental design. We're going to be doing that by going over an example that we did in class, where I introduced the class to Mr. Ulrich's fabulous tiger repellent rock. Everybody's going to want to have one. I'm going to make a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, let me show you my rock. Here it is. Isn't it fabulous? That thing's going to make me some money. See, here's the deal. If you are close to my rock, and I know this is just a picture, so you need you got to have the real thing. But follow along with me, if you will. If you're close to the rock, if you're in the same room with the rock, you won't be attacked by a tiger. Now, I've I've had this with a lot of people. I've tested it, and no one has ever been attacked by a tiger when they're in the presence of this rock. So I'm gonna package it. I'm gonna sell it. It's gonna be Mr. Ulrich's fabulous tiger repellent rock. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of money, of course. Okay, so let me be a little bit more clear on how this uh, tiger repellent rock works. Okay, so we got people who are in close proximity to the rock. And basically, that means that that's going to cause them to not be attacked by tigers. Of course, the opposite of this is true. If we take the rock away, then the people are going to be attacked by tigers. Go ahead. Prove me wrong. When I challenged my students in class to prove me wrong, the first thing they came up with was that there weren't any tigers around to attack us, so how could we know that the tiger repellent rock was working? And I said, that's how we know that the tiger repellent rock is working, because there aren't any tigers around. The tiger repellent rock is keeping them away. And they wanted to take a person and a tiger and the rock and put them together in a cage. And I said, this is biology class. We need a beaker. And in that, we'll put the rock, and we'll put the tiger, and we'll put a person. And since I'm the only person around, I guess I'm getting in there. I'm not worried because I have my tiger repellent rock in there, and it's going to keep me from being attacked. Of course, I don't get attacked, so I'm going to be able to find, let's say, uh, lots, hundreds of other people who are willing to take part in this experiment and uh, take their turn going into the beaker with the tiger repellent rock and the tiger. And let's say that 5% of those people get attacked by the tiger. Now, I'm thinking that that's... That's 95% survival rate, and that sounds like a good statistic that I could sell the tiger repellent rock on, right? Right? Anybody want to buy some tiger repellent rock? It sounds like I can make some money on this. Now, my students weren't convinced, and probably good for them. They wanted something to compare that 5% to. They said, okay, it sounds like we need another setup. We better start labeling another beaker. And what are we going to put in this other beaker? Well, we're going to have to put a, the tiger, same kind of tiger that's in the A group. In fact, the A group will probably have lots of different tigers because eventually that other tiger will get tired. So I have, I have a variety of tigers in the A group. I want the same kind of variety of tigers in the B group. right? They have to be just as hungry as one another. They have to be just as wild as one another. right? Or if I have half wild and half domestic in the A, I better have half wild and half domestic in the B, right? I want everything to be the same. I want to have uh, people in the other group and have, uh, if we have people like me in the A group, I better have people like me in the B group, right? The reason why we want to keep all these things the same, except for the rock, is because we want to make sure out of all the things that could cause there to be a difference between A and B in attack rate, the only thing that's going to be different and therefore could cause that difference in attack rate is the rock. All other causes have been controlled for. They're not going to be the cause because they're the same. Now this group that doesn't get the experimental treatment, that doesn't get the rock, um, that serves as, uh, as a comparison is called the control group. It's what we're going to compare the experimental results with. 
let's say that now that I've done this control group, that only 5% of the control group is attacked by tigers. Now, my 95% survival statistic doesn't sound very good. Because it doesn't matter whether my rock is there or not. About 95% of the people survived in that situation anyway. Now, advertisers take advantage of people's uh, lack of understanding of a controlled experiment all the time by only showing you the experimental results. Uh, lots of weight loss pill commercials will tell you how much weight you can lose by taking this pill. But what they won't show you, they'll hide, is how much weight you can lose by doing the same things that the people who took the pill did but not taking the pill you're probably going to lose about the same amount of weight. So don't let uh, the advertisers uh, take advantage of your lack of understanding of a control group. Don't let them take advantage of you. Well, that's enough for now. Thanks for checking in. Uh, once again, if you have any feedback or questions or comments or concerns or anything, give me an email. Please drop me a line. Um, other than that, by all means, go check out Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology .com. See the uh, check out some of the supporting documentation, some of the worksheets, some of the review sheets, some of the silly links. Uh, peruse your way through there. Anyway, thanks for checking in, and I'll see you in class.